Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Acousto Optic tunable filters. So let's stick this on the bench and take a look. Some time ago, I bought a pair of helium neon lasers off of eBay, uh, and these were attached together in a sub assembly. And as part of that assembly, there was an Acousto Optic tunable filter. Um, we'll just have a quick look at it and then we'll, we'll have a look on the computer at some, uh, some data sheets and uh, the Wikipedia article and such. But we've got an input window on one side that uh, conveniently says in, and then on the other side, uh, we've got an output window, uh, which is quite oval, and we'll sort of see why that is shortly, um, where our beam comes out, and then we've got an IPS MA connector on the side. Um, Acousto Optic tunable filters are really, really cool devices. They actually use um, uh, really high frequency ultrasonic sound waves, essentially, um, to change the properties of a crystal. Uh, what it does is it actually changes the crystal into a, a volume Bragg diffraction grating, which allows us to split off uh, various frequencies of light. Uh, while we've got this on the bench and before we go to the computer, let's crack this open. Uh, we'll void a warranty. Um, on the side here, we've got a little label. We'll just cut through that uh, because why not? I'm sure um, it's not going to be too exciting inside. That's quite a tough label, actually. Anyway, let's pop the lid off and see what we can see. Awesome. Um, better make sure I keep that the right way around. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. Um, not very, very exciting. We've got a very, very large crystal, um, which I think is tellurium dark side, and we'll, we'll maybe take a look at that as well. Um, we've got a piezo driver on one side uh, that you should be able to see there. That's the gold reflective layer. And there are tiny, tiny little gold bond wires uh, that attach it to the, uh, to the input, essentially our RF input on this side. Um, really, really beautifully made um, piece of kit, it has to be said. Um, when I got this unit, it didn't come with a controller, unfortunately, um, which kind of sucks. Uh, we need to find some method of driving it. Um, fortunately, there's, you know, there's bits and pieces out there that make driving these things really quite easy. Um, so let's go and have a look on the computer. Um, we'll take a look at the Wikipedia article, the data sheet, and another couple of bits and pieces um, to see how we might go about actually being able to use this in experiments. So if we're going to build our own controller for an acousto optic tunable filter, it's kind of useful to know a little bit about it. Um, so I've just pulled up the Wikipedia article here because it's, it's written in sort of plain ordinary language that anybody can understand and then we'll get into electrical characteristics and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's a whole article, well, a short article on uh, the acousto optic effect on Wikipedia. Um, so it talks a little bit about it, delves into some maths, but I'm not really interested in that. We scooch down the bottom um, about acousto optic modulators and tunable filters. We've got a happy little diagram on the right here um, let's have a look at it. Um, yes, so we've got our acousto-optic um, material and actually, oddly enough, most transparent, well, I think all transparent um, things um, have an observable acousto-optic effect. Some work better than others, right? Um, so we've got our transparent material in the middle. We've got a piezoelectric transducer, uh, an acoustic absorber at the other side, which can be anything, um, really. I think uh, I think when we saw, when we saw inside the, uh, the the tunable filter ourselves, uh, there really wasn't anything on the other side of the crystal. I think it just absorbs by itself. Um, so yeah, we've got this piezoelectric transducer, and if we imagine that it's in an off state, um, this thing is just transparent, right? And if we pass a beam of light through it, um, the beam of light just passes through it completely unchanged. Um, if we apply um, uh, an ultrasonic, um, you know, an RF signal to it, 100 megahertz or so. Um, what we actually do is we're, we're passing sound through this thing and the sound um, sets up a standing wave and in some places it's, comp you know, the material's compressed um, and in some places the material's expanded. And what we actually do is we create a volume Bragg diffraction grating. Um, the beauty of this diffraction grating is, of course, well, by altering the drive frequency, we can alter how close and how far apart those compressions and rarefactions are. Um, and then we can basically split out a particular frequency of light from the other side of the crystal, uh, which is pretty cool, right? Um, as we saw when we opened up the case there, there was very little in it. There was just a little RF input with a couple of inductors in it, not very exciting stuff, um, coupled into a piezoelectric transducer on the side of a rock, right? A, a crystal. Um, I actually managed to pull a data sheet uh, for this off the internet, so here it is. Um, we, you know, we can learn a little bit more about it. I'll just zoom it in a little bit. So it, it actually tells you, you know, everything you need to know really in order to construct a controller for one of these. Um, the material is tellurium dioxide. 
um, which is a crystal. I think it's particularly soft um, and particularly well suited to this kind of application. It tells us what the acoustic velocity is in meters per second. Um, the optical range 450 nanometers uh, to 700 nanometers, so you know in the visible portion of the spectrum more or less. Um, sort of losing quite a little bit out of the violet end there, but meh. So far so good, we've got optical aperture. Um, what I'm really interested in to build a controller is this stuff down at the bottom, um, electrical. Uh, so we've got RF frequency range 80 to 150 megahertz. Um, so we should be able to do that with a signal generator. Um, the power that we need to couple into there is about one watt. Um, so it's not a little piddling signal generator, we need something, you know, half decent. Um, input impedance is 50 ohms, and we've already, we've already seen that it's a, an SMA connector. Um, so, you know, I thought when, you know, this was, this was like a free, I, I bought these helium neon lasers and this thing is like a freebie, right? So I'm like, well, well let's, let's see if we can do something about it. Um, so I went shopping on eBay um, and we'll take a, look at, uh, take a look at what I've dug up here. Um, so on eBay, we can get voltage controlled oscillators um, for pretty cheap, 20 pounds um, in UK money or $30 um, in US. Uh, there it is. Uh, these were actually featured on Imzai Guy's channel, and he actually commented that the chip on these, the, the like, you know, manufacturers like to scrub these things out. So as Imzai Guy pointed out, it's an MC1648 um, that's actually on there. Um, so yeah, you know, other than that, what I'm interested in is can we get a voltage controlled oscillator? Uh, now the output power from this is like milliwatts, right? It's not, you know, a couple of milliwatts. It's nothing, uh, it's nothing excessive, and we need, uh, we need at least a watt. Uh, to be, well, just under a watt to be able to drive our crystal. Um, so also on eBay, um, there are these. Um, I picked up one of these as well for 15 quid, um, 20, you know, $20 American. Um, this is a little three watt um, amplifier, essentially a little three watt RF amplifier that it says will amplify from two megahertz to 700 megahertz, right? So the idea is we could just get these two little devices, couple them together, um, and you know, we should be able to power the um, acousto-optic tunable filter. Um, problem with this is, of course, um, it, it boosts the signal to three watts, and we don't want to couple in more power than the crystal can handle. Um, very, very simply, I was thinking, well, all we need to do is just turn down the supply voltage for the rail for this uh, for this amplifier, and we should easily be able to get you know just one watt out, um, which is pretty nice. So as I said before, when I bought this, there was no controller with it, and controllers are very, very expensive. Uh, these these modules themselves, you can pick them up off eBay for like 100 bucks. So I mean, they're not terribly expensive in and of themselves. The problem is uh, driving them. So this is a little unit I put together uh, to control this thing. Um, we've got a little RF output on the right hand side here. I've got a 10 turn pot so that I can vary the uh, voltage that the voltage control the oscillator sees. Um, I've got a little switch on the left hand side as well because I figured that probably at some point in the future um, I'd maybe want to control this unit um, electronically, you know, like from a function generator or whatever. So in the down position, uh, we're reading the values off the nice little 10 turn pot here. And in the up position, um, we can just feed in a voltage to tune the, uh, to, uh, tune the oscillator. Uh, let's have a look inside. It's quite a compact little unit. Uh, it's a nice little build as well. Um, we've got our little 3 watt um, amplifier down on the bottom there that, uh, that I showed you guys on eBay a few minutes ago. In fact, I'll link in all the parts for these down below. You know, if you want to build yourself one of these things, um, why not link the stuff in? So there's a little 3 watt amplifier and it's fed by a little uh, linear regulator uh, circuit so I can actually turn the voltage down. Uh, this, sh this should normally take uh, like 12 volts. Um, but I figured if we turn down the voltage a little bit, we can we can drop our output power from like uh, three watts down to one watt uh, quite easily. I did consider using uh, attenuators for this, but you know if I can just do it with a regulator, uh, why why spend the money? At the back, I've got my little voltage controlled oscillator, um, and as I said previously, Imzai Guy's channel had actually said that this was an MC1648. Um, so I actually removed the original chip, which had the number ground off on it, um, and socketed in a 1648. And lo and behold, that is exactly what it is. So it's kind of nice, uh, nice now that we know, you know, what this is. Um, that's pretty much it. These things are coupled together with little uh, RPSMA connectors. Uh, and we've got a little uh, SMA connector for our output there, and that's pretty much it. We've got a very nice 10 turn pot um, to change the voltage level on our oscillator, and that's pretty much it. Um, the knob itself, I think I had this lying around in the parts bin. Uh, it's probably come off an old oscilloscope or something at some point. Um, but yeah, really, really nice, you know, nice little um, weekend build. Um, anyway, let's let's hook all this stuff up. We'll hook it up to the oscilloscope and see what happens with the uh, with the output, and then we'll hook it up to the tunable filter and do some stuff with lasers. 
So I've got my homemade driver here hooked up to the oscilloscope um, and I'm dumping it into a 50 ohm load and we can see our not very pretty signal on the screen but it's you know near as damn a sine wave. Um, it's currently putting out like 6.2 odd volts um, RMS um, and if you do the math on that that's about uh, about three quarters of a watt that uh, that it's actually driving out there. And um, if we turn the um, motor turn part on the front there um, we can see our frequency changing. Um, so we're able to, if I scooch all the way back, what's the lowest frequency we get now to this? About 60, about 62.5 megahertz. And we can sweep all the way through. We're past 100 meg now. Um, up to 100 and, 192. Yeah, so that should be, it's, it's well with, you know, it's well in the ballpark that we need to be in order to drive this uh, this tunable filter. Um, so, awesome. Let's stick this on the optical bench and do some stuff with lasers. So I've just done a little quick setup on the optical bench here. On the left, I've got my 561 nanometer yellow green laser for no particular reason other than it fits on the bench really quite nicely. In front of that, I've got the uh, Acousto Optic tunable filter and then I've got my homemade driver on the right hand side there. Um, for, our, for our output, I've got a, a little target here uh, that's just a piece of blue foam. I've sort of moved away from using white when I'm trying to film things um, because it sort of saturates the camera and we never really get to see clearly what's going on. Uh, in the background, I've got the scope and currently my little uh, homemade generator is putting out about 61 megahertz or thereabouts. Um, let's start uh, turning up the wick on this and see what happens. We can see our very ugly signal changing on the oscilloscope there. But we can already see a spot splitting off to one side. And as we get closer and closer, I think we're about there. Um, we've managed to successfully split that spot into two. I think I'm reading about 106 megahertz or thereabouts for this particular wavelength of light. Um, excellent, so it works really quite well. Um, I mentioned earlier on that I built in a socket um, so that I could drive this off of a function generator. Um, so let's do that instead of you know twiddling knobs and stuff, let's actually pump in a, a meaningful signal and get it to do something interesting. So I've just modified this experiment slightly. Um, I'm feeding in a signal from my function generator here. It's a one hertz square wave. Uh, the thing that we've got to take into account is that we've already determined that for 561 nanometers, um, we need to give it uh, you know, about 100 odd megahertz signal. Um, so we've got to sort of carefully vary the, uh, the voltage of the waveform that we're feeding. So currently I'm feeding it exactly 6.2 volts. Um, if I change that voltage, obviously it's gonna change the frequency of the uh, oscillator. Um, so if I just go in here and hit amplitude and let's make it 5 volts, you know, 5 volts peak to peak does very, very little. Um, it is changing something, but not much. Um, whereas 6.2 volts were sort of bang on. If we were to try this with a different wavelength, for example, a helium neon laser, um, we would have to, um, we'd have to change our amplitude to some other value. Um, but we're successfully um, modulating our laser beam here at one hertz, which is pretty nice. Um, if I go back into frequency, um, we should easily be able to do whatever we like. So now I'm modulating at 10 hertz. And 20 hertz, we'll probably not even be able to see that with the camera, there might be a little bit of flicker, um, but excellent. So the beauty of this is we can take a laser that um, ordinarily we wouldn't be able to modulate and uh, we'd have very little hope really of modulating this DPSS laser um, effectively, um, but then we can modulate it, no problem. Um, this means that, you know, for things like argon ion lasers and helium neon lasers, which are other classes of lasers which aren't particularly very easy to modulate, um, we can do exactly the same thing, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I suppose if we really wanted, uh, this acousto optic tunable filter should be fast enough um, that we could, I don't know, maybe transmit serial over an optical link if we really, really wanted to. Uh, there'd be nothing to stop us doing that. As long as we're careful with our uh, voltage levels, you know, we're hitting the right frequency in our tunable filter, um, absolutely fantastic. Since everyone loves laser beams and smoke, uh, let's do that as well. Really nice. Just as an additional aside, I've actually set up a helium neon laser here and I'm combining these two lasers with a dichroic prism, um, which allows you, you should be able to combine like red, green and blue if you really wanted to. I'm passing both through the acousto optic tunable filter and on our output side, we can see a sort of orange yellow uh, spot now because we've got, uh, we've got combined 
uh, beams, but we're splitting off red. And if we tune through, we should then be able to additionally split off yellow as well. So we can, we can actually switch our output uh, with no moving parts other than the tunable filter itself, I guess. Um, so we've got yellow out and then we can tune back and get red out as well. Um, which is really kind of neat. Um, so we could combine like red, green and blue lasers on this side and have like a full uh, RGB output if we really, really wanted. So I've got my homemade controller hooked up to the function generator and I'm feeding it a 300 millihertz sine wave um, just so that we can see this happening. Um, as we sort of cycle through the sine wave, we can see uh, the yellow green flash up for a brief instant and we can see the red flash up as well. I've just got it zoomed in here and it's actually really cool to watch it do it. So I've got an argon ion laser set up uh, in the background, which is what's responsible for all the noise. I've got my acousto-optic tunable filter on the breadboard and then I've got a small target at the other side. Now, um, it's very, very bright, so I suppose what to do would be to zoom in on the target. So I'm zoomed in on our target here. We've got the argon ion beam passing through the acousto-optic filter um, onto a bit of paper. There's a peculiar pattern uh, that's sort of generated, I assume, because you know the crystal's essentially vibrating backwards and forwards. Uh, but let's start tuning and see what happens. Um, over on this arm of the pattern, we should see our green beam appear shortly. It's starting to wink in and out just now. And as we get to the correct frequency, we'll see our green appear, so our green's been successfully split off. And if we carry on going, uh, we'll see it wink a couple of times in the green as it passes through a couple of the other green lines, uh, but eventually we'll get to 488 nanometers. Which is about there. So there's 488, and then we'll just keep going, and eventually we'll see the violet lines pop out. So there's a violet line, or at least a, a very, very deep blue line. There's definitely a violet, so this, this is like the deep violet line from the argon ion laser there. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so we can essentially um, electronically control uh, the color of the beam that we're, we're splitting off from the argon ion laser, which is pretty fantastic. I'm sure I'll find a use for this. So when I was playing with the lasers there, we noticed an interesting uh, diffraction, gra uh, diffraction pattern on the target, the little loops um, that we saw. And there's actually a name for this. Uh, for those that are interested, it's called Schaefer-Bergman diffraction. Um, I'll link that in down below. Um, if you guys are interested in those kind of things, you can follow the links and have a read for yourselves. So I have a 50 milliwatt 532 nanometer DPSS laser passing through the uh, acousto-optic tunable filter. Uh, the unmodulated portion of the beam I'm actually dumping and then the modulated portion of the beam is being reflected off the mirror towards the camera. Um, the filters themselves, or, or so whatever sort of variation there are out there, whether they're acousto-optic modulators or acousto-optic tunable filters, uh, turn up on eBay, you know, reasonably cheaply. So you know, about hundred dollars or something like that. Um, you know, if you, if you're prepared to wait and watch, um, you can pick these up very very cheaply. These things will have probably cost like hundreds of dollars, brand new. But you know, on the surplus market, there's plenty of them kicking around. Um, the controllers aren't so common on eBay, and when they do show up, they're pretty expensive, which there was the motivation behind this project. Um, it has to be said, this has worked out really, really well. Uh, the intention originally was just to be able to tune the output with the uh, with the ten turn pot there, but the addition of the um, socket on the front panel that I can feed in a signal from a function generator has made this a really, really useful piece of kit. Um, I'll link in all of the bits and pieces down below if you guys want to build one of these yourself. Um, you know, once again, for AOMs and uh, PC AOMs and acousto-optic tunable filters, it'd be fine. Um, I'm not sure whether or not it's capable of driving uh, acousto-optic Q switches. Um, I don't think it's very, very, you know, I don't think it's probably fast enough to do that. Uh, that said, if someone wants to build this up and give it a try on, you know, if you've got a Q switch UAG laser or something like that, and you want to give it a burl, um, let me know in the comments down below how well that worked out for you. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I will see you guys next time.